Good morning, class. <laughs> Here I am down by the river again. It's uh, 7 a.m. I uh, came across some information the last few days, which is the key I needed to pull everything together that I've been researching for the last 60 years. <clears throat> I'm reminded of a Bible quote, I don't know which part of the Bible it's in, but it's beware the angel of the Lord, lest he crush you to his breast and ye be extinguished. I'm going to be talking about uh, the Revelation. Um, During end times, there are two large events. One is Revelation, and one is Armageddon. Armageddon is uh, a battle fought in the Middle East, approximately where Israel is, and I think it will be over oil uh, to build up a store against the coming end times, which is what I'm going to talk about. So. Since I won't be talking about Armageddon, I'll tell you my Armageddon joke, which is, knock, knock, who's there? Armageddon. Hmm. Knock, knock, who's there? Armageddon. Knock, knock. Who's there? Armageddon. Let me in. Armageddon. Tired of knocking on this door. <laughs> um, there is an overclass of uh, people, families, overlords, royalty, whatever you want to call them. Uh, these families have been in possession of the astrophysical fate and pattern of planet Earth. <laughs> and uh, they use it to safeguard themselves and stay on top. <clears throat> And if you wanted them, why not? Um, it unethically uh, presupposes keeping the rest of the people in ignorance of these facts and using it to keep them in line. <laughs> um, a lot of the ancient priests had astrological knowledge and made calendars and the reason they did that was so they would know when this event is coming and how to take advantage of it. Uh, it happens on a small scale every 400 years and the people I just accessed have been checking back every 400 year increment and civilizations fall during that time and religions change. And uh, every 2,000 years, the small 400 year cycle coincides with uh, a larger cycle, which makes it worse. And at that time, we get volcanic and crustal events like the sea floor rising up to become mountains and uh, 10,000 foot waves splashing across South America and taking out the uh, stone cities at the top of the mountains there. Now what this event is <clears throat> is every 400 years the large gas giants line up magnetically 
and have an effect on the uh, the earth causing disruptions in almost everything in the, in, in this you get earthquakes and uh, floods famines freezing cold and the plagues of locusts everything that's mentioned <laughs> in the uh, end times Now this has been manipulated lately to be, uh, this is in the Bible and humanity has been struggling along for 5,000 years, according to the Bible. And then this will end and there will be the return of Jesus Christ to uh, put everything back in order and we'll all go to heaven or hell. Um... I believe in Asia and Europe, those in charge have been using this knowledge as, as well as the Egyptians for a long time. And the content of the Mayan calendar must have been this information because the Mayans were also using it. And when the Spanish found that, it's this is it's a no-no to have this information. So they uh, took all the information they could gather to Rome. They say it was burned and one copy was taken to Rome. But I would imagine as much as possible was collected up. And those who knew about it were murdered and any scraps left were burned so the answer to what's in the vatican library among other things is this information so this means every two thousand years um, the uh, volcano earthquake or the situation gets so bad on planet Earth that it completely takes down any civilization that's there. And this would be uh, Egypt, uh, Atlantis, Mu, Lemuria, ancient India. It's not something you can come back from. Except for the small scraps of survivors who will have legends of a golden age in the past in uh, current times the uh, group of uh, knowledgeable people are building deep underground shelters in mostly New Zealand and Australia and I surmise that they have used their scientists to conclude which area of the planet will sustain the least damage and would be the easiest to come back from and attached to that would be that's the reason for the super suppression of the public down there because they're gonna have to get ready for the massive panic for resources when this happens, which will be at its peak, October 2024. Uh, this is not being told <laughs> power failure the grid's going down to the public because they believe the public will panic and uh, start scrambling for resources and that'll make less stuff available for the elite class they want to keep this thing rolling along Without a hitch, if possible, and the uh, the reset is not for now. The reset is for after this happens, 
and one of them comes out as the uh, Antichrist, the Savior, who will put it all back together with a global government. Um, they will have gotten through this, no matter how long it takes. It's only supposedly going to be really bad for a few years, two, three years, and then maybe a 10-year recovery. But on the other side, the same people will be in charge. And it will be a totalitarian, AI-controlled, science fiction kind of world. This also brings out the real reason that Elon Musk and Jack Bezos want to <laughs> send people to other planets is... This is going to be so bad that they will need, uh, or it would be very smart to have a backup of some people and the libraries of information off the planet. So this won't uh, completely destroy a possible future. This is also why there's no history all the people were killed and all of the uh, artifacts were <laughs> completely destroyed. If you um, look back to um, Western movies you've seen or documentaries of the American Southwest, you see those mesas sticking up in the desert. And those are volcanic shafts. And what was around that was a regular planet Earth, and it was scoured out by the, the glacier, which came down and completely covered most of North America. That's why they have flat tops. It was ground off with the ice and the, the rocks just at the bottom of the ice. And when the climate changed abruptly, which it, it does uh, when these things happen, and afterwards, the ice melted very quickly, and that's what created the Grand Canyon, was all that ice water tumbling down into the sea, raising the sea level and burying the stone cities, which are being found all over the world. Wilson <laughs> Powers say, no, it's not. It's not an underground city. Because they don't want any avenue to discovering this left open. Uh, the man whose video I watched who was expounding all this said he used uh, available resources to check planetary motions back basically forever and that has now been limited to 200 years. Used to be something that was hosted for amateurs to do work like this. So it's been unethical for those who know this to use, uh, let's say a primitive culture knows when an eclipse is coming and they will tell the people you're being bad and you're not listening to us so we're going to turn off the sun and then where will you be and then the sun darkens and the priests say hey what's it going to be and everyone clamors for the sun to come back and then the sun comes back comes back and this is a similar um, end times the world's going to go through a major cataclysm this is the 2000 year one. And uh, they're blaming us, global warming, and uh, immorality, things like that. Another thing that's happening with this conjunction is the grand solar minimum, which means the sun's putting out less than it usually does. And there is uh, a 
a bubble around the sun, uh, the um, one of those explorer satellites left the solar system and as it actually exited where the sun's influence is, it found a layer of magnetic bubbles. And what these magnetic bubbles do is a cosmic ray will hit the bubble and it will start, they will spin it around. And if it's one of the cosmic rays that's a good one, it's shot back towards the sun. And if it's unwanted, it's pulled back out into the universe. So to me, it's to me, it proves or hinges on or leans on maybe the sun is a living being and his being is eating his stuff for sustenance. Now, at grand solar minimum, there's less pushback against the cosmic rays, so more cosmic rays are entering the solar system and thereby our atmosphere. And when this happens, we get uh, clouds caused by impacts of the cosmic ray with the upper atmosphere. And these are up at 80,000 feet. Uh, this is the kind of thing that can cut down the sunlight and contribute to an ice age, and apparently there's nothing we can do about this. Underneath this is the chemtrails, which are metal, metal, little metal particles, and I now believe this was done to make a shield against the increased cosmic rays. And this is being paid for by Bill Gates, so if this is true, we have to thank him for that. Although the sunlight's down 20% now, which is going to make it hard to grow things. And we now have uh, three volcanoes, the La Pampas one and the one uh, Tobago. And uh, another thing that can happen to the Earth is volcanic clouds can block out the sun for two or three years, which means no crops. Poor crops. Freezing temperatures. <clears throat> and these are events which are well known. You can find them in books that thick. Uh, with, where dutiful scientists have looked at ice cores and drilled into rocks and laid all this data out. Just as an aside, there was one of those G7, G20 group meetings about global warming, and the speaker was talking about ice cores, and he said, this data is incorrect. And unfortunately for him, <laughs> the person who had done the ice cores was in the audience and said, BS, I did those when I was in university, and they're dead on. How embarrassing. So what's going to happen if we have, um, before I say that, remember the powers that be said the pandemic was an opportunity not to be missed to implement the Great Reset, which will be about three years from now. So if we're going to have uh, earthquakes, and especially where the crust splits. Another thing, if you've seen uh, things on this angle, when people go climbing mountains, and these are layers, those are layers of the old ocean floor, which are now on the sides and tops of mountains. And each layer represents a long era of maybe a million years or 10 million years, and then there was a the climate change. So the layer changes because something's different going on in the ocean. How does ocean floor get 10,000 feet in the air when the crust bursts like that? If that happens under the ocean, you're going to get a tsunami of any size. Uh, the... Um, say I'll say again, in South America there are ruins built of 20-ton stones 
which have been knocked over by water and mud. With this kind of crustal displacement, a 10,000 foot high wall of water is completely possible and that would completely wipe out all physical artifacts except the bottom stones and all the people. Nothing left, a big mystery. So on that scale, uh, our Western civilization that has uh, water pipes underground, sewer pipes underground, gas lines underground, uh, electric lines hanging from wires from wooden poles on the surface. Uh, the water comes from a distance underground. The electricity comes from maybe hundreds of miles away underground. Uh, bridges will break down underground gas lines that go and pipelines that go for hundreds of miles will be split up and supply chains will be non-existent so all over the world or all over your country you're going to have you know, just take an average a million people in a city area with no electricity, no internet, no phone, no cell phone, no heating oil or gas for heating, no, no electricity for lighting or running uh, heaters. The stores will be empty because the trucks can't bring the stuff in. Uh, leading up to this, we have uh, massive crop failures and deliberate uh, things like Farmers are being paid to not grow or burn their crops. Um, if this is being done for a good reason, it's that uh, you want to get people used to living with the absolute minimum. If they're trying to get as many people through this as possible, we have to pare down the appetite and uh, wake up the sleeping public, which is, it seems where order out of chaos comes from. To get the attention of mankind in general, <laughs> you have to really slam them with a disaster. And that's uh, part of the theory of the Great Reset. And those in charge of this, I uh, think, for doing this, they get to, uh, they deserve to keep their candy. I'm going to uh, put all my efforts in this direction, of revealing this. I think, hopefully, this is what revelation, the revelation of knowledge will be. Because if we prepare for this, um, it can be mitigated. Uh, where I am, I'm sure the disaster people are prepared for an earthquake. Or we had a tsunami here yesterday, it was one foot high. And uh, 40 years ago, I went down to save my in-laws from a tsunami and that tsunami was four inches high. Uh, they're not prepared for even a hundred foot wall of water. Where I am right now, this river goes, uh, the tide goes up four feet and it goes 50 miles inland and there's another 50 mile support hits the mountains. So a 100 foot tsunami would go 100 miles up this valley and take out everything because all the farms are there. All the um, people who bought beautiful homes out in the valley rather than living in the city, all gone. Water in, water out, everything gone. And at the end of that is the highway to the interior.
So where I am right now, I am about 10, 12 feet above sea level. So the um, preppers are preparing for this. Uh, they've known assorted amounts of this for quite a while, but the lead up will be now from 2022, January to uh, full on October 2024. And after that, things will stop happening and the recovery will start and 25 to 30 will be the recovery. And the further we get along in that, the more sense it will make. Um, in a way, there's no escape. <laughs> Because if you want to get away from the coast, the mountain that you're hiding on may collapse. There's a valley in California, a beautiful valley, and the Indians don't live there, and the white people do, and they send it to the Indians. Why? Why don't you guys uh, expand into this area? It's beautiful. They said, we remember when that area was full of water. And it may happen again, so we don't want to be there when it does. This um, area is called Astrotheology, and Jordan Maxwell's the king of that, if you want to learn about this stuff. Uh, Peter Ospensky is the main uh, theoretical astrophysicist who laid this out across the timelines. So this is a gravity and magnetism event. This is not the devil. Uh, the Jesus devil aspect is being used to control and manipulate the people. Now I know a lot. I've been doing this research for 60 years and in other lifetimes. And I ask those above Higher forces is what they're called. Um, what will be my role in this since I, I know so much about this? <laughs> and they said, it's not your job to worry about this. Um, the only suggestion was to start a religion is the only way you can get this information into the uh, 99% of sleeping humanity. Going to Peter Ospensky and George Gurdjieff, mankind is a sleeping machine who could wake up and who could become cosmically conscious, but not without work and a good teacher. So I didn't want to be, start a religion and have people chopping other people's heads off a thousand years from now in my name. So I'll be making these videos instead of starting a worldwide religion. And I think I will leave it at that. And the uh, power's gone out again because of the earthquake tsunami. Maybe I should explain what this thing is. The four outer gas giants line up in a certain way, in a square. That's what causes this. And when the earth comes around the sun from the back of the sun and gets exposed to that, it's like if you take two magnets and put them near, they don't gently go snap. And that snapping effect is what's going to cause all the crusted displacements and other problems. So 
also why Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. He wants a, a backup because the crust on Mars is solid. It does not move. So Mars is, n is not affected by these events. And part of proof of they know that anyway, but Mars has that gigantic gash on it where it got hit by something huge. <laughs> All that happened is it got scratched because the crust didn't cave in. And with that, I will leave you.